So you have recently got an offer from this startup working on a cool project and you've got another offer from this great big tech company and absolutely not able to make a decision. Well, fear not, I'm here. So having worked in a mid-stage startup for like roughly more than four years and having worked at a big tech company for around three, three and a half years, I will try to give you a couple of inputs so that you can make a good decision. So let's begin. Hey guys, welcome to 100 GB. Okay, uh, let's get to the first topic for today, which is the software engineering process. So in big tech companies, you get to experience the entire software development process uh, from the concept, design, implementation, testing, and maintenance. You come across stuff like PRDs, design docs, project plans, coding, code reviewing, testing, measuring performance, analytic, postmortems, and whatnot. Coding is like hardly 30% of the total uh, effort. Whereas in a startup, a few bits like uh, design, unit testing, or even maintenance might be missing. In most of the cases, you have PRDs and uh, like a product roadmap or a project plan for the entire organization. But rarely do we see uh, design docs, project plans, formal code reviews, continuous integration, continuous build. Um, having said that, so as a startup grows, it eventually starts bringing all of this uh, in. But hey, by that time, it may not be a startup anymore. <laughs> but not exactly a big tech company. We don't know. Okay, next, the code. Okay, a lot of startups actually don't focus on the code quality, as in no formal code reviews or design reviews are done. And at a lot of startups, you actually don't get to write tests. For example, so uh, I I worked at a startup for four years and I wrote a good number of tests, which was zero. So it's more like that they don't have the time to do all of that. The main focus is on just building the product and get it out there in the hands of the customers ASAP. At Big Tech is where you realize that code reviewing and writing tests actually takes more time than the time it takes to write the code at the first place. And I was initially, uh, I was personally astonished by the kind of comments I used to get on my code. Uh, a lot of times that when you're writing code, you are so fixated, you are, you are on this path of a DFS and you actually need uh, another pair of eyes to get, get you out of the DFS and think in a more literal way, in, in, in the BFS way. And that is where code reviews help a lot. And also at big tech companies, they actually enforce their code style using custom linters, custom static analyzers, and all of this heavily cooked up into the continuous build as well. So eventually, even if the code is written by different teams, it is actually very consistent and it reads the same. Third topic, technology. Okay, let's start with the big tech. In big tech, a lot of times you are actually living on this tech island where the entire life cycle consists of internal tools uh, from code reviewing, uh, writing code, that is IDE, analytics tools, databases, uh, backend container architecture, etc. Everything is in-house, which means that outside the bounds of the organization, all of this uh, actually doesn't have any decent value, but the concepts do have some value. And by concepts, I mean whatever you learn uh, while working on the this kind of stuff. Okay, whereas in startups, you are actually working on the cutting edge stuff or like the cutting edge tools and technologies which are available out there in the market. Those may be open source tools or those may be paid tools or services as well, which are offered by third party companies in the form of a license or a contract or something. Okay, fourth topic, the most awaited, the compensation and perks. Okay, as far as the total compensation and perks are concerned, they are mostly competitive because, hey, even the big tech companies and the startups, they are competing in the same market, which means that they, they have to be very competitive. But there are still a few differences. So in big tech, you might get lesser base salary, but they will be heavy on the stocks or as we call them, restricted stock units or RSUs that do hold some real value. For the perks, there might be uh, like more options for food. The medical insurance might be better and that's about it. Let's, let's go to startups. So startups might offer you 
more pay salary because the stocks that they have they don't have any real value as we call them esops or employee stock options plan or something anyhow once you join a startup you end up in this vicious wait for the ipo or for the acquisition with a decent buyback so more or less you end up being something like this Yeah, so you keep on waiting for the IPO or the acquisition, but it never happens, or does it? But mind you, if it does happen, you're gonna make a fortune out of it. You're gonna make a fortune out of it. So, a quick story about this company called Citrus Pay. Uh, in 2016 or 2017, this company got acquired by another company called PayU. If you're from India, you might have heard of PayU Money. The office boy over there had a couple of esops and he ended up making 50 lakhs inr with that acquisition and buyback <laughs> which is somewhere around 62000 us dollars which is quite a bit so you have watched this video this far why not just take a pause and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already okay i'm not 100 sure which direction this channel is gonna go but I'm enjoying, you guys are enjoying, so let's keep it that way. <laughs> okay, fifth, career level. At a startup, we know it's generally kind of flat structure where the hierarchy is very small. Uh, for example, the individual contributor level might max out like after one or two promotions and whether you like it or not, you might have to jump to management. Not only that, on a daily basis, you might wear a lot of different hats. Like one day you might be PM, the other day you might be writing code, the next day you might be doing some UX design kind of stuff, the fourth day you might be uh, doing some kind of R&D. That's how uh, life in startups is. Whereas in big tech, you have a defined hierarchy with different ladders. Even the roles and responsibilities are well defined for various ladders. Let's say the, the individual contributor ladder and the engineering management ladder. It becomes really hard to become a leader in a big tech company because you have to prove yourself that you can handle this big of a team or this big of a role because the stakes at a big tech company are generally higher than uh, startups. Another reason is that at at such kind of role at a big tech company, you will be making a significant impact on the entire world. So an engineering manager for a team at a big tech company can be thought of as a director of engineering for the entire company at a startup. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, uh, the last topic for today, developer and product curiosity. Startups are very fast paced. The product is quickly conceptualized, designed, implemented, then rolled out, measured, and all of that is done like very quickly. But at a big tech company, the product velocity is quite slow because of the process, higher stakes, larger code base, and a lot of various other reasons. And oftentimes for a product release, you have to coordinate with different cross-function teams, which makes it even more challenging. And that's not only true for the product management, it happens at every letter. It doesn't matter if you're a PM, you're an engineer, or you're, you are the engineering manager, you'll have to make sure that all the cross-function teams are well onboarded with whatever you are doing, if you impact them or they are impacting you somehow. And that is all for today. I could go for hours and hours and talk about the differences, but it, it was really hard to uh, like have it all compressed in these six topics. So if you happen to have experience of working with a startup and a big tech company, just let me know in the comment section what kind of differences you saw. For everyone else, feel free to bombard questions, start discussions down in the comment section and let's take it up from there. So this is your host Gaurav signing off for today. I will see you in the next one. Hmm?